The permanent form notes that indigenous people's right to food and food sovereignty is inextricably linked with the collective recognition of rights to land and territories and resources, culture, values, and social organizations. Subsistence activities such as hunting, fishing, traditional herding, <coughs> shifting cultivation, and gathering are essential not only to the right to food, but to nurturing their cultures, languages, social life, and identity. And, and I, I wanted to point to that because during the summer and even now, many of our communities across the province are in the process of harvesting and putting away food for the winter. And the impacts that, that we see from development, whether it's logging or mining or pipeline development or oil and gas development, the impacts of that on our communities, on our people's ability to, to, to continue our traditions and to continue to rely on the, the food from our lands <coughs> is important. Many of you know that for many of our communities, the, the social assistance is a primary source of income. And it's not very much. So our people continue to maintain their reliance on the land and the resources that it has. And so it's important to protect the land and the environment to ensure that the food that comes into our houses and that feeds our people is, is, um, is not toxic and is not contaminated. Where I come from, there's a mine in, in the, behind one of our villages not far away that um, contaminated the lake. The food from that lake is completely off, off limits now, even though that mine has been closed for some 30 years. So the discussion that um, Carla mentioned about Kinder Morgan, um, the, the, the points that were raised around the Northern Gateway, um, and Stuart mentioned that there's been several, several there, there are more than one or two pipelines being proposed. Taken together, those pipelines running through that, that core in the north there needs to be a rationalization. There's already a, a, a pipeline through that area. And, and there's proposal for at least three or four others. And the cumulative impact of those proposals and their impacts, uh, we don't really know for sure. And the environmental assessment process now, um, such as it is or such as it remains, is not going to be that, that important safeguard um, anymore because now it becomes a political decision at the cabinet through the minister, minister's recommendation whether or not projects proceed in many cases without any, any review at all of the environmental impacts that we have in this country, environmental assessment impacts um, to a limited degree now. What we don't have is um, indigenous people's impacts assessments or assessments dealing with the impacts of indigenous peoples. And, and so, so we have to fit our, our, our stories into these environmental assessment impacts, but there are also people impacts, for sure. 